Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about Fujifilm GFX. So let's dive right into it. Now, why exactly GFX exists? Well, reality is, what if you like Fujifilm? You like the interface, you like the user usability of that equipment, and you love the quote-unquote feel, the color simulations, everything. You are happy with that. However, APS-C is just not good enough. Now you may be like, no, APS-C, okay. It's personal preference. You may like it. Other people may like, dude, I want something bigger. So in those sort of scenario, uh, Fujifilm is like, bro, we have something even bigger. How about you go to GFX? That's the whole point of it. Now GFX jumps above full frame, goes into medium format. Now one crucial aspect of medium format is that medium format is a zone, quote unquote. Anything above a full frame, anything below one foot sensors. Yeah, like this big, like photo plates kind of era. So you may be like, does that mean there are different sensors that are classified as medium format? Yes. For example, full frame, 35 millimeter. That means 35 millimeter. You don't think too much about it. You buy Sony, you buy Canon, you buy Nikon. 35 millimeter full frame don't think too much about it the moment you go to medium format different camera company can have a uh, different example for example this is fujifilm big sensor here's the deal. phase one still medium format even bigger sensor and again you can buy um, other camera camera companies uh, that can have like a hasselblad that can have something in between or something even bigger than this and all of them technically classifies as medium format. So be very mindful of that. Medium format is a zone, not an exact specification. Now, why the heck somebody would want to have something this big? Well, uh, current technology is really good, but we are really good at suppressing problems. For example, right now, if you ever saw any full frame camera, especially at around high ISO, around 2000 or 5000 ISO, you will be shocked if you saw the raw data as in like how much noise there is fundamentally. We are just becoming really good at, uh, you know, noise suppression with uh, proper measures and algorithms. But what if you did not have that issue in the first place? What if you're like, hey, how about the sensor itself is clean? That is a law of physics that will directly translate to your pixel pitch. Meaning if you have 50 megapixel in this size versus 50 megapixel in this size, this fundamentally will have large photo sites compared to this one, inherently translating into better noise floor. So inherently you can have 100 megapixel in this, 100 megapixel in this, but 100 megapixel on this will give you much better dynamic range, much better uh, noise floor. And I'm talking raw, raw data. As in like the data is clean, it just, it does not require as much processing, as much uh, artificial look uh, like you know uh, in order to make it look good like think of this like how the heck apple that is like this tiny camera sensor somehow gives photos that are like damn good nice some pressure so what if uh, there are people who are sensitive especially if you are printing things or if you are doing something that is very high end very luxurious people do not like that that artificial look you you can tell it's like dude this photo does not look great that's why people love negative there are people professional who are still using negative for that exact reason so that's the whole point if you go to large formats you have super high megapixel count and you can have very low noise floor like very low and uh, why Fuji is making this? Well, very simple. There are other uh, systems, for example, Phase 1 and Hasselblad and some others also, but those are idiotically expensive, meaning you don't talk about cost because if you have to talk about cost, that means you can't afford it. They, uh, they're like really, really expensive, like 20,000, 50,000 or 100,000 dollar kind of expensive. Yeah, ludicrously expensive. So from those point of view, basically people who are coming from digital medium format, they're like, dude, this is free. Take it and go. Take it and go. This is so cheap. And from anybody who's coming from full frame, this is like highest end full frame that you can buy. So that's the GFX era. So why the heck this company did this? Well, reality is APS-C always is looked as low cost and amateur equipment. Now, you may be like, that's not true. It does not matter. That's how the market sees it. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Meaning, if people consider it as a low-grade equipment, they will never buy high-end lenses for me. If you do not have enough money flow in due to sales of lenses, there won't be next-generation lenses. And then it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy because full frame will keep going through iterations like Mark 50, while your uh, you know, APC lens would be barely at Mark 3 and Mark 4. And people like, dude, look at the quality. So that's the whole point. And that's reality and that's the primary reason why micro four third fizzled out right now all micro four third is is just a video format that people uses with adapters with for uh, like you know ef lens mount that's the whole thing APS-C has that stigma to it and be mindful APS-C is not the first time digital happened uh, APS-C sensor size already came in the long ago of negative era meaning there were film rows for APS-C size that also did not took off so fundamentally 
is just not good now there is another aspect from economic side of you from fujifilm meaning fujifilm is what a company what is a company for profitability now company never wants to sell you a very low price product it's always bad they always want to sell you what we classify as halo products meaning they spent they make one item they have to spend for one item shipping cost one item's uh, inventory cost everything one 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 but the profit they get out of it is huge now if you are talking about let's say nikon d3100 company has to make hundred thousand of them sell them then they will get barely any profit barely but if you are selling something that is idiotically expensive at that point your profit margin is huge because there is like you cannot drop price beyond a certain point because of physics because of economics because of fuel prices but you can increase the price as high as you want to as long as people are willing to buy it that's why every company wants to sell you like uh, you know sony a1 canon r3 and like you know nikon z1 so that's the whole point of it the company always wants to be in that front where they're like it would be much better for them to sell just few thousands of z1s and they're like dude we are set we are set for this year so even Fuji wants that. Now Fuji has inherently stuck in a position where they're like they cannot charge four thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollar for an APSC. People are like, dude, nah, nah. -uh. Now you may disagree with me, but market will say that otherwise, so to say. So flat out, uh, why didn't Fuji did what Panasonic did? Panasonic tried with uh, Micro Four Third, did not work out as they expected it. They jumped it to full frame. Now problem with that is full frame is where, you know full of well experienced company. Experience is one thing you cannot buy. And fundamentally, you are talking about I talked about lenses. Those lenses, full frame lenses, even Sony, which is the youngest one, there's already at Mark II lens series. And uh, compared to everything else, like uh, you know Nikon and Canon, they may be Mark 15 or 16. So fundamentally, lens is the limiting factor in any technology because that creates your resolving power so in those sort of scenarios if fuji wants to jump in it will be stomped down without any issue like the sole, sole reason you do not see hundreds and thousands of uh, you know panasonic full frame that's the whole reason for that jumping into a field where everybody else is like very well trained very like you know ready for combat yeah you're gonna be poofed out of existence like sony was a very uh, unique miracle because again they jumped into mirrorless before anybody else did so they had early mover advantage and they did had enough tech experience to make it work with brute force but Fuji would not be able to succeed if they tried. So Fuji is like, hey, what if we offer something truly unique? Because I did special. People are rich enough. It's just like, do you have something that I'm willing to buy from you? Like, think of this way. If I say $10,000 car, you're like, I'm good. If I say $10,000 mobile phone, you're like, nah. That's the whole point. Uh, it's like, are you offering something for common people that people are like, you know what, I, I, I think I should buy it. That's the USP, unique selling proposition that people want to have that. So they directly jumped from full frame to medium format. And why the heck uh, jumped into this? Well, the reality is the new medium format is a zone kind of scenario. So they did, uh, did not make the sensor as big as possible. Benefit of that is their per unit cost is exponentially cheaper than phase one and Hasselblad. That created a scenario where they're like, dude, come to medium format without going bankrupt. That's awesome. And the price is not so high that people are like, you know what, I really can't touch it. That creates a scenario where they are making a halo product and selling a lot of it. GG from a company's point of view. That's the whole point why this company exists. It's like it's a medium format is here, full frame up there. How about a little bit up? How about you spend a little bit more money and jump into medium format? It's amazing business strategy. They are not they are not cannibalizing their own sales. That's another issue with uh, Canon, Sony, and Nikon, where they cannot truly make a good APS-C because they are like to, it will cannibalize our sales of full frame, and they cannot make truly good lenses because again nobody has enough money where they can like okay let's do R and D or do lens lineups because ideally all you have to do is take DSLR. Uh, full frame lens, put a uh, you know, field reducer and then uh, plonk it as, as a like you know mirrorless APS-C sensor. Then you will have amazing quality, full frame like quality but again expensive. So that is why uh, Fujifilm is doing this. They are like literally f uh, finding a zone, a band of people where like I want to go into medium format, I cannot go to medium format because it's too expensive. I am okay enough to jump into from something bit expensive than full frame. So Fujifilm. So what about the performance? Now let's be clear. If you are looking into the system and thinking like this is gonna be the most amazing, the most badass performance, don't even think about it. Don't, just don't. No, just no. Flat out. If you compare this to Canon and Sony, it's gonna bitch slap this. So flat out, do not expect to buy this and I'm gonna like, I'm gonna do the amazing, you know, uh, photography of like, you know, sports event. No, it's not gonna happen. Like the rolling shutter on this puppies are so bad that if you are taking a photo of a truck or uh, that is moving fast, your truck will look that's the whole point. It's not as high performance as that. Do not expect that. Now, what about pro level equipment? So like medium format, which is trying to compete against. Again, not even compared to that also. They're like, wait a minute, then why the hell? Well, here's the deal. Those pro level equipments are kind of equipment that are like, you know, stuck in their own ways. Where they're like, dude, you have to learn 
to work with us. We will not work with you. Even though you are the one paying for us, you have to work for us. Like camera forces you to work in their way. But this camera company is like, hey, what if you get the medium format? What if you get the resolution? What if you get the low noise floor and don't have to deal with garbage as issues? What if you have to deal with efficiency, fast readouts, fast usability of modern cameras? Fuji is like, hey, we already have learned a lot of things from X series of cameras, their APS-C lineup. What if we take the usability of that and put it here? For example, autofocus. Medium format uh, autofocus is just like, might as well not think about it. And IBUS does not even exist. This is the first camera. First camera is like first uh, family of cameras that are doing that. Battery life, all of those things, like little, little things that is giving you usability of normal camera companies in a era where almost nobody has like everybody's like you have to sit down this camera properly you have to take a photo burst road does not even exist and like you know dual card redundancy many of them does not even have that They're like they only work with this way or that software and it's like no no how about it's just as good as a camera and it's just a bit bigger sensor so it's band there is a band like above full frame in terms of noise performance in terms of dynamic range in terms of megapixel and below the like a you know bank destroying bank balance so it's basically uh, extreme, uh, stuck between two extremes, too high performance of full frame, but it's very expensive and uh, not as high performance as like, you know, medium formats uh, champions, but in between. And lens selection is growing because I specify nothing matters other than lenses. That's why micro four thirds stuck. That's why APS-C never truly actually grows. Uh, lens, if you do not have good lenses, it does not matter. Like for example, uh, I always specify lens is the resolving power limitation. Whenever you buy G lens, it's not very high resolution. Now like, wait a minute, lens has a resolution? Yeah, that's why G master rating exists. G master is a mathematical concept that any lens that is certified for that, the glass quality of it should be high enough that it can resolve up to 100 megapixel. So if in future, uh, let's say they cr uh, created a scenario where they have like 100 megapixel or even 150 megapixel, it will actually resolve that power. Meaning you will be like, it's not just a bigger file, it's just actually clarity you can see. Lens requires that. So lens is the first thing you must understand. Now. Fujifilm is known for making some good lenses, so they are making a lot of lenses at this point in time. They have four zoom lenses, which is almost unheard of in like, you know, uh, medium format era. Nine prime lenses. Now be mindful, do not buy into the system thinking that you're going to get most amazing shallow depth of field. No, uh, like it can easily be bit slapped by f1.2. If you can buy f1.2 in your full frame, uh, none of them can come close to it. I specified the specifically reason for buying this is a your field requires it many there are some scenarios where like dude you show up with full frame they're like does the door disappear and in those sort of scenarios you have to come up with medium format that's where you buy this and you want to get low noise inherently inherently not by noise uh, you know reduction inherently low noise and very good dynamic range and idiotically large megapixel if you need so 100 megapixel is a start so that's the performance aspect of it so for whom this is? Well, reality is a different kind of work environment. It's not specified to like go toe to toe with like, you know, Nikon and Canons and all that jazz. No, flat out no. And it's don't even think about fast action. Server. Like three FPS is the bust. Like we had negatives that could do faster than that. I'm not joking. Like there are actual negative cameras that can do faster burst rate than that. So flat out, it's inherently well suited for static subject. So if uh, what kind of static subjects? Well, pro uh, you have products, you have modeling, you have landscape. In those sort of scenario, this has really good system where you're like, dude, this is good equipment. You do not have to think too much about it. 100 megapixel for low cost. Think of it that way that it's like, dude, I'm buying a camera that does 100 megapixel in one shot because you can buy full frame right now, which has IBUS and generally most of them will have what we call pixel shift. They're going to shift it and they're going to give you 100 megapixel. And that point in time, it will actually compete toe to toe with a full a medium format camera. But again, it would require tripod. It would require idiotically complex setup and requiring multiple shots inside a succession so hopefully that you will have at least one or two that had like perfect alignment because sometimes alignment is not as perfect so in those sort of scenarios you will buy this sort of system do not try to buy that 50 megapixel one most people are disappointed in it not because like again you if you have requirement you have to show up with medium format you do show up with a medium format but the sensor is kind of outdated so it does not have like the oomph needed to beat against a full frame and not to mention given the fact that pixel shift is now existing in full frame and lenses that like you know uh, certified for 100 megapixel you can get surprisingly close to it so you have to be mindful of that that's why jump to 100 megapixel do not try that 50 megapixel full frame system uh, 50 megapixel uh, APS-C medium format so 
flat out what does it mean this simply means fujifilm does want this to become the next big thing it's not gonna become it's well not flat out not well suited for most photographers like yeah there are some people who are doing wedding photography but again those are not hectic kind of people you will know you will know basically if you are using this sort of camera you are in a position where like i can take my time if you are in a position i gotta do it as fast as possible as quickly as possible don't even look into this system so it's a for a different kind of ecosystem and it's a kind of from a company's point of view it's a really good approach because again there are no competition in that space and its price is high enough where per unit sold they're gonna make a lot of money and fuji is known uh, like as a good company that keeps polishing their equipment after firmware updates so i'm pretty sure uh, any camera that you are buying right now will serve you well in upcoming time so it's a good equipment but not for most of people unless you are like you know in a librarian or a museum specialist where you have to take very detailed photos where you're like dude this photo will be used in future for restoration work yeah then buy this so for those sort of people they are like shut up and take my money because from their point of view it's free compared to all other camera options but from normal people don't look into it it's not it's not gonna suit you well specifically the disappointment that people are like, dude i thought it's gonna have shallow to fill and somebody comes up with like f1.2 of a full frame and it's like damn so be mindful of that so this was my presentation on fujifilm gfx lineup hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching